in the next, uh, the next presentation is from Pam Reynolds, Industry Development Officer, Industry and Investment Department from the Department of State Development. So, Pam. Well, good afternoon. And thank you all for being here. And thanks to um, the Royalties for Regions and the Department of Commerce for this opportunity to update you about the Trade Start program. And with that said, let's get started. So, if you're looking for a fresh approach to international business, we'd like you to take a look at Trade Start because we believe that we can help. Who we are. The Trade Start program is an inter international business initiative of the Commonwealth government and the, in partnership with the state government to deliver the services of Austrade, which you are probably aware is the Commonwealth's Trade and Investment Agency. The program was developed to assist small and medium-sized enterprises to increase their presence in the global export market. WA's Department of State Development in Perth is the lead agency facilitating major resources, industry, and infrastructure projects with significant or strategic importance to the state. The industry and investment branch, which I'm a part of, facilitates investment and trade into the state and actively assists local businesses to capitalize on international business opportunities. As a partner in the Trade Start program, the Department of State Development employs Trade Start advisors in the Perth and Margaret River regions, and advisors are well versed in the needs of exporters and skilled in the matters of international trade. Now, just because you're up here in Kalgoorlie doesn't mean we can't come see you, or you can't come down and see us, stop in if you're in town. We'd love to see you. We can also do a lot of this over the phone, so you're not excluded, please. <laughs> Through a network of worldwide resources via Austrade and DSD, Trade Start services can open up a world of opportunities for you to grow your Australian business in receptive international markets. And the biggest thing is that there's no charge for the services of the Trade Start representative. Where we are? Well, we're pretty much everywhere. As a member of the Trade Start program, you have the combined resources of Austrade and the Department of State Development's global network of over 50 countries with more than 150 offices worldwide available to assist you in whatever market you choose. Trade Start works to reduce the time it takes for you to meet the right contacts and offers guidance to avoid the many risks involved in doing business internationally. We offer access to buyers, agents, partners, and customers worldwide. Market research, either country or industry. Industry specialists and in-market consultants. Trade shows and event coordinators, and assistance through the government grants, Export Market Development Grant. So, do you have what it takes to be ready for international business? Are you ready now? To have a successful international business, you need a product or service which is in demand with clear export potential in overseas markets, as well as the necessary commitment, resources, skills, and information to support sustained exporting activities over the long run. Developing an international business is no different than starting and building your domestic business. In fact, you can expect to consume more management time than developing a business at home. In most cases, solid domestic sales from the basis of, form the basis of a good exporting business and will ensure that your business processes are in, the, in place and well tested. Exporters find they need strong financial resources, and we've shown you a few areas today where you can get that assistance to expand overseas to cover the cost of product modifications, travel and international marketing, to name just a few of the additional costs you might face. You also need to have the right people in place to run the export side of your business, and this may mean somebody in the local market. Many smaller companies don't get around to implementing a formal business plan, but once you start exporting into you are moving into a business at a different level. 
and it's wise to consider putting these plans in place. There's also information on the Austrade website and a template to help you put an export plan into process. There are a number of courses and training available to you through organizations such as the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Australian Institute of Export, and the Small Business Development Corporation. And I urge you to take advantage of the information that is out there and available to you. Oops. Assessing your position. Knowing your financial position is vitally important before you put together an export plan. Your financial position will determine how much effort you can put towards exporting, whether you need to move resources from one, another, from one area to another or seek additional financial assistance. While your financial position should not dictate your plan for becoming export ready, it should be a vital consideration to assess the resources, time, skills, and commitment you can devote to building an export market over a sustained period which is typically about 12 to 18 months. After you have matched your exporting ambitions with the reality of your financial position, you need to develop an export plan as part of your overall business plan. The export plan should also set, an, set objectives against which you can measure performance. Some of these might include um, spreading your market risk, increasing production volumes, lowering unit cost, and improving brand image or profits. Once you have identified a target market, you need to consider how best to get your product or service into that market. Distribution channels include direct sales, licensing, agents, distribu distributors, and so forth. The cost to you of getting the products to market including the cost of any modifications and the margin you want to achieve, are not the only pricing considerations, but they will be the most significant considerations over the medium to long term. Pricing should also take into account the risks of currency fluctuation, commissions, and retainers payable to agent and transportation costs. Payment conditions should reflect not only the generally accepted terms of trade in the market, but more importantly, your cash flow needs. You should also arrange the terms against which you are going to be paid, such as uh, cash in advance, documentary letters of credit, bills of exchange, open account, or consignment. <coughs> Excuse me. You can start by going to the Austrade website. They have an excellent website that provides a uh, range of programs, step-by-step -step guides, and services online to help new and established exporters with their market journey. One of the online tools for new is, exporters is the International Readiness Indicator, which has been designed to help Australian businesses determine whether or not they're ready for export. It's a great place to start. Now, I'm not going to go into some of these others fully, but um, the step-by-step -step guides, I truly encourage you to go in and read each one of these. They have different guides regarding risk management, getting financial assistance, freight and logistics, sales lead, legal issues. It's a great place to go so that once, when you start uh, with a Trade Start Advisor as well, you know some of the additional questions to ask and areas where you may need further clarification. The Export Market Development Scheme. What is it? It's an Australian government financial assistance program for aspiring and current exporters that provides substantial cash rebates for overseas marketing expenditure. Now remember these are for marketing expenditures, promoting your business and your product. The maximum grants are up to 150,000 per year. And this you have a maximum number of grants up to seven. You don't have to do all seven in consecutive years. Um, the main concern or main eligibility requirements is that your income is not more than 50 million in a grant year, and that you incur at least $20,000 of eligible export expenses under the scheme. For first-time applicants, they can combine their first two years of expenses. Otherwise, it's normally within one financial year. So for the $20,000 that you incur, 
then anything over that, over and above that, is what will be eligible export expenses. And then it, it is approximately 50% of that that you will get back. Now it does, there is a um, scale on that for the seven years, but it's pretty much 50%. It doesn't go down too much after that. The main question from, we get a lot from people is, what can I incur? What expenses can I use? And this is a really good one. Um, the cost attributed to maintaining an overseas representative on an ongoing basis to market your business overseas. Those costs can include your salaries and fees, your office expenses, travel, and accommodation. Marketing consultants, expenditures incurred in engaging independent consultants who provide service relating to the market development and market research. These consultants can be located either in Australia or overseas. Communications, that's an easy one. Trade fairs, external costs associated with participating in overseas trade fairs and conferences. <coughs> external costs associated with brochures and promotional videos. Advertising and other prom promotional material is also eligible. Patents and trademarks. Overseas buyers visiting Australia. I love this one. If you want to bring over someone to look at your business, to look at your product or your service, you can um, use those costs such as airfares, transport, accommodation, and meal costs associated with bringing them over. Um, as an eligible expense. Now, that's not too often you get to do that, so I think that's a pretty good, pretty good option there. So don't get turned off so much by the additional expenses that you might incur by exporting. It's no different than doing your own business here at home. The thing, the big difference though is, is that you can um, get reimbursed on these, these costs up front, or not up front, but once expended, then you can get the reimbursement back. We don't often get that, so I think that's a fantastic program. So to summarize, and I am a couple minutes over, whether you are a company entering the international market for the first time, or you're a company who is currently in international market and wanting to, to go into um, additional companies, countries, Trade Start's prime objective is to help you achieve your long-term success in international business. So for more information, um, I'm happy to answer any further questions after the presentations today or we'll also be here tomorrow if anybody wants to meet or to register assistance with TradeStart. Thank you again.